Oh, good evening, room 218. I realized that I have to be out of the classroom this morning at a meeting, so I'm going to record today's math lesson. If you notice, we've skipped ahead to the next math lesson today, which is dividing tens and hundreds and thousands because it's a much easier math concept than the one we're still working on, which is called interpreting the remainders of a division problem. Uh, we will be getting back to that Monday or perhaps later today. But for right now, with your wonderful substitute teacher, we're going to move forward with the next lesson. Now our essential question for divide tens, hundreds, and thousands is how can you divide numbers through thousands by whole numbers through 10. It's very similar to what we learned in our previous chapter in multiplication where we solved a simpler problem. For instance, let's just relate it to our what we're going to be doing with division with what we did with multiplication. In chapter 3 we learned we learned that if you wanted to solve let's see 2000 times 8, you didn't have to do the whole entire problem, uh, solving a large number like 2,000. We solved a simpler problem, and we looked at only 2 times 8 at first, and we did, and we also could say that you have 2 thousands, okay, it's another way to look at it. So you say, all right, I have 2 thousands. If I do 8 times 2 thousands, that gives me 16 thousands, and then what we would do at the end is we would convert that to the actual numerical uh, version of 16 thousands and rate it like this. Another way to make sure we have enough zeros is to make sure that we've included all the zeros in our 2,000 in our 16,000 because we did simplify it. We did do just 8 times 2, which is 16, and then ended up converting that to 16,000. So we're going to do the same similar idea today, but with division. So we'll be solving a simpler problem in division. We're going to be looking at it just with the smaller single digit numbers, perhaps a couple of two digit numbers. So let's look at our unlock the problem here. Dustin is packing apples in gift boxes. Each gift box holds four apples. How many boxes can Dustin pack with 120 apples? I think this is a very real world problem for some of you because I know I got some wonderful gifts from Mrs. Jellison and from a lot of you because you went actually apple picking this fall. So if you're giving them out as gifts, and I guess Dustin is, he has got to take his entire amount of apples he picked, which is 120. So what is 120 divided by 4? What we're going to do is we're going to identify the simpler problem, or as they say in step 1, identify the basic fact. 12 divided by 4. We need to know that um, we're going to use place value because we're going to convert our 120 to tens. So, we, so 120 is equal to 12 tens. Now we have to do the division step. Since we've converted our 120 to 12 tens, we have 12 tens divided by 4. And here again is our identifying the simple fact of 12 divided by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3, but since we were doing 12 tens, our answer isn't just 3, it is 3 tens. We're thinking 4 times 3 tens equals 12 tens. Remember, when you solve division, you're really using multiplication. So therefore, we have to convert our answer of 3 tens back into a standard form number, and 3 tens in standard form is 30. Therefore, 120 divided by 4 is 30. When you solve the simple problem, you can underline 12 divided by 4 is 3. But since we have a 0 here in our 120, we want to make sure we have the 0 in our quotient. And um, let's just go over our terms. This is the, say it, dividend, right? This is the right divisor and our answer is the quotient. And you'll notice that this entire lesson, there aren't going to be any remainders. Many of you are cheering right now. So our final answer is, so Dustin can pack 30 boxes. 
That's right. So let's go down to another problem and I'll scroll down here. All right, for example two, we're going to take and look at another way that we can look at a larger problem because if we know 120, 120 divided by 4, then if we're, and especially if we're looking for patterns, I think you'll easily be able to see that there's going to be a pattern here of what's going to happen when we get 1,200 or 1,200 divided by 4. Same idea, we're, un, we're identifying a simpler act, all right, of 12 divided by 4, which we know is going to be 3. But in this case, we're not dealing with 12 again, we're dealing with 1,200. So, but we can write it as 12 hundreds. And 12 hundreds divided by 4 is 3 hundreds. But when we write 3 hundreds in standard form, it is 3 hundred, like so. 3 looks odd. That looks like a 6, I apologize. But anyway, so 12 divided by 4 is 3. 1,200 with the two zeros is going to be 3 with two zeros, or 300. All right, we do want to make sure that we are carrying through. Now, down here, this is where it gets a little trickier. And I want you to take a look at this, because this does say explain how to use a basic fact and place value to divide 4,000 divided by 5. Now, our first thought might be, all right, well, we'll take the 4 and divide it by 5. But there's a little problem there. Are we able right now to divide 4 by 5 and come out with a whole number? No, because 4 is smaller than 5. It is not a multiple of 5. But there is a multiple of 5 in 4,000. See if you can call that out on the count of 3. 1, 2, Three. Good. I think I heard everyone say 40 is a multiple of 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at 4,000, not as 4,000s, but we're going to convert it into a 40. And you know what we have 40 of? We're going to make 4,000 out of 40 hundreds, because there's our two other zeros. So we have 40 hundreds, okay? and 40 hundreds, all right, divided by 5. We're going to do 40 divided by 5. 40 divided by 5 is 8, but not just 8 because we're dividing 40 hundreds. So we, it is 8 hundreds, and 8 hundreds in standard form looks like this. Boy, my pen's really laggy tonight. Sorry about that. Should appear eventually. So I hope this helped and you'll be doing the next page, part of the next page together with your substitute teacher, the first few problems. And then after that, I would like you to try the remaining problems on your own because that's the only way you're going to be sure that you understand the concept. But I have a feeling if you remember how we did it with multiplication, doing division is going, to make, is going to be an easy transition for you to always look for the simpler problem to solve and then make sure that you adjust your answer to reflect that. Thank you. I hope all of you have a really great morning. I should be back by 10 o'clock, so that's awesome, and I will see you then.